Okay, I hope that looks good because the sun's setting. But I realized as I was filming that I didn't have an intro, so this will be the intro. Um, this is my first video on YouTube. So it's very janky and I definitely don't know what I'm doing, but now that I'm editing, I'm making notes. So just want to say thank you if you're watching. Um, this video is going to be a combination of like two days hiking, looking for mushrooms, not really like filming mindset. So it's just kind of like a lot of random clips. Also, now I realize like filming, you have to film horizontally because vertically is like, doesn't fit. So some of the clips are vertical, so sorry about that. Also, the audio is really shitty sometimes because it's windy and I'm outside and I don't have a microphone, so bear with me here. But yeah, this is my first video and me and my friend Sandra are going to be running the channel and hopefully we'll be posting as much as we can and giving you guys as much content regarding mushrooms and being outdoors and just being goofy with your friends outside. So that is the intro. Thank you for watching. Hello. I'm starting the 2022 mushroom season and I thought I would just make a video to see what mushrooms I find today. Um, it just started raining. It's springtime in Florida so it just started raining a little bit. We had two really like heavy days of rain on um, Friday and Saturday and it's Tuesday so it might be a little dry but I'm still gonna walk around and I did already find one mushroom! So I am a super um, baby like forager mycologist so I can't identify things on the spot but I do have this book Mushrooms of the Southeast that was recommended to me in like a class that I took with a friend um, so I'll be trying to identify all of the species after I walk around for a bit and I'll just like sit down and try to identify them. And if not, you can always comment. But yeah, I found this kind of looks like it's some type of, is this at all focused? No, it kind of looks like some type of Amanita group. I see it has like a skirt and it's not like moving the skirt. Um, but you know what? I don't know. So we'll have to see. I did bring a brown paper bag because I heard that was best to preserve the mushrooms. I might put this one in a smaller brown paper bag to put in the brown paper bag because um, I don't know. I don't want to ruin her. Also, she does like a very delicate skirt. So I'm going to put her in this brown paper bag and then I'll put her in my big brown paper bag. If you're here as like an actual forager, you already know this, but if you're here like me, just like, I know the basics, um, I don't have a basket, but he was recommending that we like bring brown paper bags to kind of um, have our mushrooms because when you put them in like synthetic fabrics or like if you put them in something where they can't breathe, they kind of like dry out more and um, it's better to preserve them apparently if you have a brown paper bag because it's like semi-permeable and they can breathe in there and they won't like shrivel up and go bad on you while you're still walking around and foraging so I've literally been here for all of two seconds I just saw these right off the side of the path so I plucked them and let's continue sorry if it's windy but I found my next mushroom these are some really funky looking bolettes. Um, I'm pretty sure they're on, like, growing off of the dead wood. So that's a good um, identifier when I'm going to be identifying these later. Um, but I'm just going to take one. I don't need all of them to identify. I'm probably going to take this one. It seems like the freshest. Oh, there's some little buggies down there. Nasty. So, trying to see where it starts. 
uh, 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 uh. I'm trying to separate them gently. Here we are. Nice. That's a really good one. Okay, so this is the mushroom that I saw right over here. If you can see that and I've seen um, like a variation of this mushroom but not this one but then I saw down here there are some beautiful big ones so I think I might take probably this one and maybe that one if they're super different but um, let me try and um, unearth this they might come together That's gorgeous. Ooh, I hope there's not a spider on it. <gasps> That's so beautiful. Wow. There was a little baby. <laughs> Look how tiny that is. Sorry. Here, get your spores all around the area. Um, these are so gorgeous. Um, what do you think I should do? Should I pick that one? I feel like the followers are telling me to do it. I feel bad picking multiples because I don't know if they're edible, so I'm not like here to pick. <gasps> Look how pretty that is. I'm not like trying to harvest um, fungi, so I feel bad picking more than one. And so, oh, there's a big bee around me, but I'm not gonna freak out. Freak out! I said I wasn't going to freak out, but I freaked out. Oopsie. Back to the mushroom. Look how pretty those are. Um, basically, sorry, the mushroom is the fruiting body of the larger organism underneath, which is the mycelium, which is like the white rootish system that kind of interweaves the forest together. And so like a comparison would be that the mushroom are like the apple of an apple tree like it's just the fruit that they produce and obviously picking an apple from an apple tree doesn't hurt the apple and that's like kind of what it's for it's for you to pick um, so it doesn't hurt the organism at all and it's actually kind of beneficial because when you pick mushroom you're actually you know in the act of picking and disrupting the mushroom you're actually releasing a lot of the spores that probably would not have been released if it was just like living its stationary lifestyle and not getting picked um, and that's also partly why we use like semi-permeable breathable containers to hold them in like a basket or a brown paper bag or like a mesh bag or something like that it's because as I am walking around the forest looking for other mushroom their spores will go farther than they normally would have by themselves and they'll be able to you know produce more mushrooms and grow farther than they would have in different places so um also I think I'm just gonna pick this sorry guys but they're just too beautiful and <laughs> when you're trying to identify mushrooms it's best to if there's like a troop like this, like multiple mushrooms in an area, it's best to kind of pick them all and see them all and photograph them all so that you can get a wide variety of what they can look like. Because if you just have one mushroom and you're comparing it to like a picture in a book or like identifying in the book, it's like, well, this mushroom, you know, as you can see, has more of like a concave cap, whereas this mushroom, if, if the identifying feature was a concave cap, I might be like, mm, no, this doesn't have that. Um, so just something to think about. Ah, look how pretty. Okay, I'm going to continue. This really gave me a boost of confidence. I found this beautiful little mushroom. Um, it's just like a, some type of, um, bracket fungus that's growing, but it's growing on palm, which is significant. Also, this is what I was talking about sorry, with the um, pine needles, like they'll just grow around the pine needles. Do you see that? From my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, the edging here looks brown to me. I know if the edging is white, that means that it's still growing, but 
for me that looks like the edging is brown so i think it's done growing and i'm gonna say that it's okay to pick i'm going to um harvest it oh gosh oh gosh oh gosh oh gosh <laughs> it's tough 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 so here it is wow yeah i think it's done growing because it has that brown rim um, and yeah, that's what I was talking about with the pine needles. They're just like going directly through it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to identify him. So I'll take him. Also, if maybe it'll zoom. This is what I was talking about with like, um, undersides being like gilder or non-gild. You see like all the tiny little holes, but we can talk about that later when I sit down and try to identify. So that's another one that I've got. I found a beautiful mushroom that I'm not gonna harvest that I just wanted to show you guys. These huge, beautiful, again, I don't know what type of, ooh, this one's nice and wet. Um, I don't know what type of bracket fungus these are, but they're growing on this dead, what I'm assuming to be pine. Sorry, I'm not even showing you guys. Um, as you can see, this one fully just has like sticks growing through him. Um, and there's a lot on the underside and kind of going all up this log. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to harvest them because I know that I'm not going to really do anything with them. Um, they're like rock hard. I think they're fully rock hard. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to harvest them, but... It's nice to find a lot of mushrooms in a little area, but I always like to check out like any sort of white um, mushrooms that I see growing on dead logs because I'm always like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the moment that I find like a trove of oyster mushrooms, but no oyster mushrooms here, just, just some little bracket fungi. So anyways, I'm going to continue, but this was just a little cute find.
Okay, mid-video caveat, the following clips are going to be from another day when I went hiking with my friends. The first clips were just by myself and then like identifying after by myself. These next clips are going to be when I went hiking with friends and so a little bit more lackluster because I wasn't really going to film but then we had a bunch of videos. Anyways, they're in there too. But again, in the future, I will definitely be a bit more like um, precise with my planning and like making like today's a new filming day and I'm going to film. So um, just to give context to what you're about to see and how it's different than the previous video. Thank you. Wow. Oh, you know what though? These are not um these are not oyster mushrooms. They're, They're not, not gilled. Oh. Wow. They look a lot like them. Oh, but we will be taking these to identify. Oh yes, we will. Wow. Oh my gosh, Sandra. Look at this oh. ear fungus. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, they're not. This is the best time Good of eye. my life. Good eye. <laughs> no, Caroline. It's all you, Caroline. No, good eye with the... Oh, oh my God. Look. Give a slug. A slug? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most magical falling slug <laughs> in the world. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow, so nice, so nice, oh, so, so nice. good. They sound like Prince Royce when he says, so, so nice. Aventura. That's quite it good. Serves oh. out, out of focus a little bit there. That's quite good. Wow, that's nice. Flip your ear inside out real quick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? Ah, beautiful. Good. Oh, yeah. Woo! Hurts playing music on the trail. No respect. I get it to some extent, but at the same time, I'm like taking one for the team, Sam. <laughs> What is it? Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. What is this? I'm so sorry. Is this 25? Wow. Oh. Woo. Oh. Wow. She's beautiful. Wow. As we know from our class, red mucilage are very hard to identify. Wowee. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> I'm gonna freak. I'm gonna freak the fuck out. Whoa, I don't feel any gills and there's a bug flying near me. What are you, baby? Wow, that's quite deep. Oh, oh my goodness. It is a bolete. Just a little side note, me and the girls went on a little hike to mainly find mushrooms. Um, and we were able to find a lot of these honeycomb fungi that I'm gonna try a recipe that I saw online for some like dehydrated chips. Um, and they have these really pretty undersides that have like um, honeycomb like gills. Um, we also found these little woodier fungi. Very fresh, very pretty. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll insert the name of what I think this is. 
pieces, but there was just one, and I know that they usually like form clusters, so I don't know if it was just super young, because there was nothing around it, but I'll insert the name of what I think this is. Um, we also saw a bunch of these, pretty sure they're saw gills. These are super dry, super dead, super old, but um, here they are. And we saw this beautiful, I'll insert a clip of this beautiful hairy um, hexagonia. Very smooth, you can tell it's super young. Um, this one I still haven't identified, but it also had like these beautiful, um, gills that I thought would make it a very easy identifiable feature in this little funnel shaped cap. So, and there was only one of these. And then I'll insert the name of these, I forgot, but we found a couple of them also. Very, very small gilled fungi growing on, as you can see, dead wood. Um, so those were just some of the more interesting ones that we found today. Alrighty, that was the video. Thank you for watching if you've gotten to this point. Um, again, first video, so I'm excited to do more videos. If you guys want to see like how I identify and like the fast forwarded clips, you know, of me just like sitting down and like cutting and then dissecting and gathering information about mushroom. Um, if you guys want to see like that part of the process and how I identify, then let me know. You can follow us on Instagram. I just made us an Instagram, so there's like three things on there, but it's cute. Um, more videos to come. And um, what else did I have to say? Yeah, just thanks for watching and bye.